In this lesson, we are going to apply principle of conservation of energy to the slope type of questions. Principle of conservation of energy can be applied to skateboarding down the slope as with all other things. So it is a conversion of gravitational potential energy at the top of the slope to uh, kinetic energy to the bottom of the slope and back to gravitational potential energy at the top of the slope, just like the as what sh this shows. So a simple application of a conservation of energy would be find the velocity of the skateboarder at the bottom of the slope if we know the starting position of the uh, skateboarder. Assuming that skateboarder of 50 kg starting at uh, rest started at rest at 6 meters height, find her velocity when she reached the bottom of a smooth slope. Uh, there are two things that you need to consider. One thing is that it started at rest, so in this case, it means that the Ke is zero when she was at the top of the slope. Another thing is that it is a smooth slope, means that there is no friction. So in this case, it means that there is no energy loss while she slopes, uh, goes down the slope. The total energy at the start will be equivalent to the total energy at the end. If we sum up all the total energy, in this case, it's just only gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. Of course, the start and the end. Um, but we do know that kinetic energy at the at start is zero. And gravitational potential energy, since it's at ground level, it is considered to be zero. So the equation is simplified to gravitational potential energy at the start equals to kinetic energy at the end. So we just substitute in the formula mgh and half mv square and in this case since m is both in the same factor so again you can cancel so you are left with gh equals to half v square and therefore you substitute in the value and by rooting 120 we will get 11 about 11 meters per second so this will be the solution you find that for different slope shape um, it does not matter even you have uh, something that is like a concave or straight or even like a wiggly curve you find that at the end of the slope okay uh, when the person is over here at the same position it doesn't change the ending velocity of the slope so this is known as using the conservation energy make it easier for us to calculate the velocity of the skip order because we do not have to consider the uh, different shape of the slope Another implication is that if you're on the slope but at different places but you're of the same height, you will actually end up with the same k kinetic energy, and in, which implies that you have the same velocity at that point. So what it means is that uh, for a skateboarder, if he goes through this particular uh, difficult course, you find that the speed that sh she would have at here, 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 here would be the same. Or if she was here, 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 it will also be the same. So this is how it happens. Find that it uh, slows down and then picks up speed again, slows down, slows, picks up speed again. But however, there are some common misapplications of the uh, conservation energy. They miss understood that conservation of energy means that the gravitational potential energy equals to kinetic energy always but this is not correct what do you mean based on the previous statement having the same height leading to having the same kinetic energy doesn't mean that gravitational potential energy at that height is equals to kinetic energy at that height if you have the same situation of 50 kilograms uh, at rest at 6 meter height we want to find the velocity when she reach 2 meters. So that means that we are not trying to find uh, what's her velocity over here. We are trying to find when she reach here, the velocity is equivalent to how much. Wrong application would be you assume that gravitational potential energy at 2 meters equals to kinetic at energy at 2 meters. So again, you find that you put in the mgh equals to half mv square and substitute in height equals to 2 and you try to find the velocity. 
follow the same method. However, this is incorrect. Okay, correct application of the conservation energy is that energy total energy at the start is equal to the total energy at two meters. So again, GPE at the start and KE at the start equals to GPE plus KE at the end. So we find that then how does it lead to any difference? Is that again kinetic energy is equal to zero. However, at two meters you will still have some gravitational potential energy. Okay. And uh, of course kinetic energy. Okay. So that's what the main difference. So therefore putting it in, you have something like this. And similarly, M can be cancelled because it's all present in all three terms. So substitute in and you find that this one uh, goes over will be 60 subtract away 20 will be equal to 40 and your answer will be 8.9 meters per second another possible incorrect application is that this time round you find that uh, the starting velocity is 4 instead of uh, starting velocity is uh, 0 at 6 meters so right now with the new uh, starting velocity find the final velocity when you reach the bottom of the smooth slope. Okay, again, the correct, incorrect application is something like this, where you follow the same steps and you find that the ending velocity is uh, 11 with when velocity starting velocity is considered 0. So they make the logical conclusion that, oh, since it started out with 4 meters per second, then the final velocity will be just uh, at a 4. Okay, so but however, again, this is wrong application. The correct application would be, uh, assuming that no energy loss, you still use total energy at start equals total energy at end. However, in this case, uh, as with previous case right now, this is no longer zero. So you put in the entire formula, it is gravitational potential energy, kinetic energy at the start, then equals to, in this case, of course, uh, this is considered to be zero. So as you substitute in the value, you find that ending velocity is about 11.7 meters per second. So the key point is that you always try to start with total energy at the start equals total energy at the end, but that's assuming that there's no energy loss. But what if you have friction okay, or energy loss? So let's try with that. So uh, um, you find that nothing uh, much is different except that you need to account for the friction okay so in this case um, same starting scenario but uh, after rolling down the uh, slope you find that the average frictional force is 150 and so you want to find the velocity at the bottom of the slope so this time round you have to take account of the friction and total energy at the start is uh, you need to add on at the friction term equals total energy at end okay so this will still be the same, okay, add a friction, and then this will still be the same. So as we before, gravitational velocity, this is zero, this is zero since kinetic velocity was zero. So you are left with this. But in this case, the work done is uh, friction multiplied by the distance. But friction is a negative force, it's that opposed the motion. So in this case, it's negative 150 Newton. So you just only need to substitute in the value and multiply by the distance of the slope. Okay, work this out. Okay, so you find that the key point is that uh, this is this time round you cannot uh, cancel away the m because this fiction, this work done term doesn't have any m, so you have to work everything out. And what it means is that this is the potential energy. This is the energy taken away by the friction, so you are left with only 1002 joules for the kinetic energy. And therefore, your energy, uh, your velocity is equal to 7.1. Uh, last type of question, assuming the skip border is 50 kg, uh, same situation, after sliding down the slope, she only managed to go up to 4 meters on the other side of the slope due to friction. Find out the friction work done by the slope. So this is the situation. Okay, instead of going all the way down, you find that she would go and only manage to go up to four meters high. So this is the situation, and obviously, uh, 
it is because friction uh, taken away some of the energy and she cannot go up as high. Again, the equation is just total energy at the start plus work done equals to total energy at the end. And you substitute in. So, but in this case, this is at the 4 meters high. Okay. Um, you find that kinetic energy at the end is considered to be zero because uh, she, she momentarily stopped over at the, the other side of the slide. So whatever energy that she uh, gains going down the kinetic energy and as it gains up, the kinetic energy is converted to gravitational potential energy. So this is how it happens. But of course, taking into account that there's this friction. So again, substituting in. So you'll find that uh, in this case, if you, uh, what you want to find is this. So you go over here. Okay. Um, so you find that uh, the work done by the friction is negative 1000 joules. Note that it is, we are trying to find the work done by the friction, not the friction. So, but in this case expected, uh, the uh, work done by the friction is negative and cause the skip border to have less gravitational potential energy when she goes over to the other side of the slope. Okay, that's all for now. Please subscribe and support my channel. For my other physics video lesson arranged according to topics, please visit my blog at boringphysicsteachers.wordpress.com. You can subscribe to my channel to be informed when I upload new physics video lessons. Thank you.